My intention is, is I divided the presentation in two parts. One is, let me talk a little bit about our existing network, and then we will go into our future network. In, in the existing network, I will give you a general overview of the city, and then we will talk about uh, the tremendous challenge we had in Santiago when we integrated with the surface transport, public transport. That was in 2007, and all the things that we had to do in order to, 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 with, to, to, to cope with those growing demand. And then uh, of all the projects that we're performing now to upgrade our system. Then I will talk about the new lines that we are planning to construct in the next uh, six years. Quick overview of Santiago. Santiago is a city today of 6.5 million inhabitants. We uh, have a growing per capita GDP. Nowadays, it's 14,000. I say growing because it's actually growing, but and also because that means that, uh, as you know, one of the social, um, uh, what people try to get when they, the social per cap, the income per capita grows, is to own a car. So most of the people now are trying to own a car in Chile. That that's not very good for public transport. So we have that challenge in, in the city. We nowadays have a, around 1.3 million cars in the city, but if you see what we expect for 2020, we expect to have more than three times the amount of cars that we currently have. So that's definitely going to be a challenge. And of course, for us as a metro, as an, uh, we can see it as an opportunity. This is our current network. We have uh, five lines. 103 kilometers and 108 stations. We are the second largest uh, metro network in South America, in, in, in the Americas, actually. The first one is Mexico City, with a little bit mo more over 200, and then we with 100. We will have, at the end of this year, 1,075 coaches, uh, with 80% of them being rubber, rubber tired, and, and, and only one line is steel wheel. And uh, currently we have a little bit more than 3,000 workers working directly for Metro, but also uh, considering uh, uh, outsourced co source companies, we have like 8,000 people working directly for us. As I said before, in 2007, we integrated ourselves with the, with the surface uh, buses mainly, uh, with, with, with a challenge. That is, uh, we are a state-owned company, and the buses are run by private companies. So, and of course, the authorities, the government, trying to balance uh, the situation. We have 4 million trips in the city. Currently, we account for 2.3 million uh, uh, journeys a day, 65, 650 million journeys a year. And uh, we account for 58% of all of those journeys. Here you can see our ridership. You can see what happened in 2007. That was an 82% increase in our ridership from one day to the other. So it was, it was pretty, pretty a challenge to cope with this growing demand. After that, basically, we, have a, a, in, we are increasing our ridership in peak time and decreasing a little bit on the off-peak time. That, that is because buses are working very good on off-peak timing when they don't have uh, problems with traffic. Our maximum passenger load is uh, uh, currently at, a, at about 44, 45,000 passengers per hour on line one, which is the, the axis of the whole system. We try to see our, our proposal to our customers in, in a functional bonding, including transport services and, of course, additional services, for example, like retail services at stations and so on. But also, we like to see it as an, uh, try to develop an emotional bonding, adding citizen services. That's why we add a lot of culture. We have uh, bike shelters. We provide other services that, that try to connect in an emotional with, with our passengers. So what we have done in order to uh, deal with such, an demand, such a demand that was increased due to our integration with buses. We divided that in four areas, capacity increase, passenger flow management, safety improvements, and passenger habits. I'm going to go real fast through them. In, uh, in terms of capacity increase, of course, we bought new, uh, or some more capacity, more trains, 20%, 180 new cars. Then we implemented a, an, ex, an express operation, which is actually a skip-stop operation. We don't, we don't have a, 
a third track in order for trains to overpass the, the other ones, but we uh, alternate the stops. With that, we increase our commercial uh, speed, and therefore we were able to increase capacity by, by almost 15% with this kind of operation in peak, in peak time in the morning. We also implemented operational loops. Currently, we are operating five operational loops in the, in the network. Uh, that are operated only in peak time in the morning also. With that, we were able to increase between 5 and 10% capacity in the, in the most extreme uh, parts of the network. We improve our fleet availability. It was a big investment in maintenance in order to work at nights and, and, and to have the right spares uh, to deploy our maintenance people across the lines. Uh, and we were able to increase our availability from 88% to last year was 98%. So that, uh, that was actually uh, an increase in capacity at, 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 uh, at the same moment. We were able to reduce our technical incidents. Here you can see a chart of the technical incidents lasting more than five minutes uh, uh, as a rate of a million of coach kilometers. And you can see that after the integration, it went up, but then Again, through investment in, uh, in spare parts and, and, and solving problems with doors and, and many things that we had, we were able now this year to be below even the rates that we had before the integration. So we, we are already in control of the, of the technical incidents. When you see these numbers, we rank uh, uh, around fifth in the world in terms of the amount of incidents that last more than five, five minutes. Sorry, this one. And, and uh, another thing that we're doing right now is implementing CVTC in line one also to increase capacity in, uh, in that line. So those are the things that we did in order to increase capacity. In terms of passenger flow management, we, did, uh, we implemented, well, we improved many of the stations. We added, uh, uh, we, uh, added width to, to some of the platforms. We uh, built new escalators, uh, but also we, um, put this platform assistance to help closing doors on peak times. We, uh, using Legion software, we've been a uh, micro simulation, the passenger flows, and we have uh, passenger uh, plans, pedestrian plans for in, in all stations. And also we involve passengers in, in the process of uh, uh, moving across stations. In terms of safety, we increase our safety staff. We have nowadays 1,000 people taking care of, of, of security issues in, in, in at stations, that around 10 persons per station. We also have 10 cameras per station, 10 CCTV cameras per station. We introduce no uniform staff on trains. And uh, something also very important is that we, something that not many metros do, is we try to review proactively what, what is happening in our station. So with CCTV cameras, we have a lot of people watching at them to try to prevent a suicide or, or, or any, any security event that could be uh, 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 seen through the cameras. So uh, we have people, again, doing preventive uh, security. In terms of passenger habits, we had this, uh, what, you, what you call here, the mystery shopper, you know, to try to uh, incentivize uh, good practices. We try to avoid people sitting in, in the floors and letting people uh, disembark before embark and so on. Uh, we needed a lot of investment in this in order to help uh, the flows moving uh, through the stations. So. That was basically kind of a summary of, of the, all the measures. It's, 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 it was made very quickly, but it took us a lot of money and like four years of work to be able to cope with such a growth in demand. 82% again was, was the, the challenge. What are we doing now? Now we uh, are adding also more trains. We, we are adding 108 more coaches. Um, that, that is going to mean a 17% increase in the rubber tired lines that we have. We have three, three lines rubber tired and two lines that are steel wheel. Those cars, for the first time, uh, they're going to be with air conditioning. So we're going to start having air conditioning in, in, in trains in Santiago. We also, to battle uh, temperature, we've been also introducing mega fans at stations to improve ventilation. We are starting the process of uh, refurnishment of our older trains. One third of our trains are Alstom made in 74. So there are a little more than 35, 30, between 35 and 
37 years old, and we're in the process of uh, uh, the refurnishment of them. We decided to uh, put elevators in every single station of the network. Currently, we have only elevators in 70% of the stations, but now we have a plan. In the next three more years, we're going to have full accessibility at any stations in Santiago. We also decided to add free Wi-Fi in, at stations. Uh, we started with a pilot program with only 20% of them. Uh, that is working already this, uh, at this moment. Uh, you can see that we added also special furniture for them to, to, to sit down with their laptops. They can even plug in their laptops in order to, to, to work there. This has been very successful uh, with community. Also, uh, uh, we're adding every day, trying to add more retail for the purpose of giving a better service, but also, as you know, that's an ancillary revenue that helps us reducing cost. We uh, continue adding safe bike parkings at stations in order to enable people to ride through the bikes and then connect with Metro. And also we continue adding culture to the travel experience. We believe that that's a social um, need in our country that we have to supply. We have two million, more than two million people every day passing through our, our station, so we have the opportunity to expand culture in our country, that's why we have 20% of our station with uh, permanent artworks. We have uh, 19 metro uh, public libraries. That's the biggest public library in the country is at the metro stations now where people can borrow. We borrow last year more than 300,000 for free, more than 300,000 books. Uh, we also have the biggest national poetry contest that is run through us and we perform more than 1,000 free concerts that lasted only 15 minutes. So we enter a station, we have a 15-minute break, and then we go out. That's basically what we're doing in, in our existing network. When you look at into the future, I, had, I wanted to share with you uh, the, a few questions that we um, worked before defining our expansion plan. I'm going to leave that for the... For the um, you can look at it in the, in the website, but because it's going to take me too, too much time to explain them. But probably one of the conclusions out of that was that it, currently we have 103 kilometers in a city of 7.5 million. And uh, we, uh, out of this uh, analysis, we find out that we needed 200 kilometers in a city like Santiago. The, as you will see in, in, in the next slides, the new uh, project is going to add 37 more, so we're going to end with 140. So still we have 60 more kilometers to go. We don't see the city expanding more than eight, than eight million, and, and then we believe that it's gonna stay there. So we, we have to grow at least to double the size that we have right now. Other things that we learn is, is the, the need to have a, a energy efficient technologies and a, a, to add a lot of a retailing, not only again to provide better service, but also to help uh, getting non-revenue, uh, non-ticket office revenue to the system. I'm going to skip all this. And then we come to the, to the new lines. These are the definitions of the new lines. We came out after an internal diagnosis of the things that we needed to improve. And then also we visited the, the, the best practices all over the world in order to define what was the opportunity or what kind of metro we needed in Santiago. In terms of, uh, and the challenge was to perform a, a lot better metro, one probably a, a state-of-the-art metro, but at the same cost of construction. That was, that was basically the challenge. We were able to do it in terms of the efficiency. We increment the interstation distance. Now, as, as, as I said before, we are integrated with the public transport on the surface. When you are integrated, you don't need metro to go to every corner to pick up passengers. You know, that's, that's the bus's work. So, uh, as we learn from Hong Kong and from Singapore, you can uh, uh, open up the distance between stations, and that, and that is a lot of money that we were able to invest in other, in other things. We also finally decided to move into steel wheel. That also is a good opportunity for us because with that you expand competition and you have car coaches that can transport more people and that cost less than the rubber tie that we used to have. We're going to have central platforms at uh, terminal stations. We're going to move into automatic sale of tickets. Nowadays, we do have machines, but we only account for 5% of, 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 of the selling of the tickets is, is through automatic machines. 
We're going to have turnstiles, both at entrance and exits. We currently, we only have at entrances. Both lines are going to be technologically the same, and they're going to be interconnected, so you're going to switch trains between one and the other. And we're going to have a UTO operation, fully UTO. No, nobody's going to be on board. Of course, in terms of safety and security, we're going to have cameras on trains. We're going to have a, a platform screen doors, and a, the, the power is going to be taken from, the, from a rigid catenary. In terms, of customer, <clears throat> in terms of customer service, we're going to uh, have all the information system both on board and on platforms. We're going to improve our accessibility, adding more escalators. We're going to improve our density in the, in the peak hour in the mornings. Uh, in the numbers might seem uh, uh, high to you, but currently we have 6.0 uh, density in Santiago. And uh, we expect to reduce that to 5.5. Again, this is the, 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 the busiest hour in the peak in, in, in the morning. We're going to ask spare trains. One of the things that we did also to cope with the growing demand is we, we decided we asked maintenance to give us all the trains in the morning. So we're using currently 100 percent of the trains every morning. That's the target that maintenance has uh, to deliver, and we currently have 99.7 percent delivery. So we're using all the trains. That sounds very good in the short term, but in the medium term, it doesn't make too much sense. It's, it's too risky. That's why, for example, uh, with, the, with the new coaches that we're buying, the 108 coaches, we're going to keep some spare trains. And in the line three and six, we, by definition, we're going to have 5 percent of the fleet as a spare. We're going to have more commercial services, better ventilation, seven extra combination stations. Nowadays we have nine, we're gonna add seven more, so we're gonna actually become a, a real network. You're gonna have different options from one point to the other. And uh, we're gonna connect in two stations with suburban uh, trains. That's, that's also something very important because uh, uh, that's something that has not been developed in, in Santiago. Uh, our train, state-owned train company has not done very well in the past. So they don't have too many projects. On the opposite, Metro company has, uh, has been managed very well. So therefore, uh, there is no plans to do suburban trains. We are, by law, available to do that. We can do it. So we probably, our next Metro line after three and six probably is going to be a suburban train line. And we're going to add those services to our, to our basket. Um, these are the, the two lines. <clears throat> this is line one. As I mentioned before, we are adding line six that is parallel to line one. That's very important. We, we're going to take out some, some uh, passengers out of that line of people. People are traveling from here. They're traveling on buses to reach line one and then move to the eastern part of the city. Now they're going to be able to ride line six. And then we're also going to uh, uh, develop line three. Line three was announced uh, uh, 25, 27 years ago in 85. Unfortunately, we had an earthquake that, that uh, year, so it was postponed. And finally, we're going to be able to construct it. So in total, it's going to be 37 kilometers, two lines, uh, 28 stations. Uh, distance between stations is going to be 1.38. And the total cost of the project is going to be a little bit over 2.7 billion US. So this is where we are right now. We are the, the, the most reliable, fastest, safest, cleanest, and most efficient transport system in Santiago. We are the second largest metro in Latin America. We, something very important, we don't receive subsidies from the government. We are in an operational profit for the more, more than the last 10 years. There's only five metros in the world that can, can account for that. Uh, and what we want to be is we, by, uh, we want to be a leading metro in customer service, in safety, and in efficiency, and to stay within the five best metros in the world. Uh, this is done through the analysis of Comet. That, as you know, they compare all the data from different metros, and we've been uh, uh, within this group in the last years, and we will fight to maintain ourselves in that selected group. Professor, before you leave, you need to answer one question sure. that I think we all have. I understand how, how Dallas area can have a real surprise with a sports event in ridership one day. I don't understand how within a year you can have 82% of ridership increase. What happened in 2007? Well, the, 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 when we 
uh, uh, merge with the with the system with the bus system, and and basically people didn't have to pay extra to ride a b two or three buses and metro because you you can you can take three buses and one metro for the same price, so people started using a bus till the next metro station and then they connected with us. So it, it, it was a change, completely a change of pattern of of of, 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 of the passengers. So that's why we received such a such an amount of, of, of passengers. So it was quite challenging, and again, it took us like three years to to get in control of of, of the new scenario. Well, thank you very much.